everyone. My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be talking about even more unique pervertible DIY ideas and I love talking about this because in BDSM there is certainly a stereotype that you have to spend a lot of money to be able to get good equipment that is worthwhile to have for scenes that will impress people at dungeons that will make people want to play with you and that is certainly not the case as we will see on this list I have so many things on here that I've seen at dungeons that people go absolutely bananas for so you don't have to have a big budget and also when you are shopping DIY and when you are looking for things that you can turn into a kink tool which is essentially what perverting is like it's about turning an everyday object into something you can use for kink when you do that it means you can hide stuff in plain sight it means you don't have to worry about if the store is going to have discreet shipping or if it's going to show up as like BDSM LLC on your information on your bank statement from buying it online with a debit card. You get to have a little bit more security with your shopping, with having stuff around the house. And it's just, it's nothing but good things really. So I love talking about pervertible DIY stuff. And there are some interesting things on this list I have not seen anyone else talk about before. But with that being said, let's talk about some of my top pervertible ideas. Number one would be grooming gloves. I don't know if these have been a thing for a long time. I feel like I never heard about them until maybe like two or three years ago. And essentially what a grooming glove is, is it's a glove that is designed for grooming pets, usually dogs, cats, horses, things like that. You can buy them at feed and tax stores. They're not very expensive. And what is so great about them is they have a ton of texture on them. I actually have one here. It doesn't like fit me super well because it's meant to be used on me not not by me but if you guys can see the texture on that it just it has sort of a flat shape to it and then it's more spiky on the fingers different ones by different companies will have different designs different intentions for the use of it it's rubberized so it's not necessarily super flexible around your hands if you want to bend it like this but it's fairly comfortable to wear it's cheap it's easy to use and because you can use it both with like the spikier parts as well as the flat part on the palm that means you get a lot of different sensations from it and if you're using it just for like sensation play over the skin if you're using it as part of a massage that's going to have a very different feel from like genitorture or spanking using something like this. I think this also makes either a good intermediary step slash a replacement for a vampire glove. And I've mentioned vampire gloves a lot on my channel and vampire gloves are usually leather gloves that have some kind of like metal spikes or needles put in them with the intention being that it can potentially draw blood or lead to very intense sensation along those lines. And I don't love those because they can't be sanitized and the needles typically don't last very long without bending and breaking and they just there's a lot of room for user error so I don't love those and they can be very intense. I feel like something like this because it does have spikes on it it can get kind of close to that but it's not identical. However I do think this is a lot safer to use if you don't want to draw blood but you like the sensation of a vampire glove. So I just these this is like Get a pair of these and then just do like a sensation play scene with this. It's so good. I love it. Grooming gloves, amazing. Love them. And if you love stuff like this, maybe more for a pet play purpose, like you are a pony or a puppy or a kitten and you like being groomed, I have another sort of side bonus idea for you, which is a body brush. This is not even for pets. This is for humans. Because something called dry brushing has become quite popular in certain beauty spaces online. I think I got this at Ulta maybe for like under 10 bucks and it has a little strap for your hand you can see here. And the bristles on this, I don't know if you guys would get like any kind of like ASMR from this, but it is very soft, has a little 
a little hint of scratchiness on it, just a tinge, not too much, but it's very soft and very dense and short. And when you're brushing it along the skin, it's it's a, it's not like a hairbrush that you would use on your head. It's its own unique thing. And so I really like this and I think it's great for aftercare, great for massage, sensation play, all of that stuff. Easy to get Ulta, Target, anywhere like that. I don't know like if you're in Canada or the UK what the equivalent of those things would be. Boots perhaps you would get one there. But love these. These are really great too to have on hand. And there's actually a lot from the beauty department slash store I would be talking about because the beauty world is full of devices that could be for beauty as well as for torture. So there's a lot of connections going on here. One that I really love are ice globes. And the ones I'm thinking of are a glass ice globe that is filled with a liquid and you can keep it in the freezer or the fridge and it gets very, very cool. And you leave it in there for about like 20 minutes at least. And then when you put it on your skin, it's designed for like depuffing your eyes, relaxation, you know, if you have maybe like jaw tension, things like that. But because it goes in the freezer or in the fridge, and it's glass and it's cold, you can also use it for temperature play. And something about temperature play, especially with cold, I don't love is there can be a lot of mess, right? Cause like ice cubes, they melt everywhere. If you wanna use like a butter knife and like dip it in ice water, then you got water everywhere. Like this really prevents a lot of the dripping and the mess that goes along with a lot of like colder temperature play. But these are really designed to be used on the face. You can't get them in bigger sizes as well. I just think these are really nice. They're pretty, they're aesthetic, they are breakable. So I would not maybe keep them in your toy bag with all of the heavy floggers and the metal and everything else. Keep it in its own place where it's not gonna get broken. But if you're using them responsibly, they will not break and they offer a really great opportunity for sensation. If you want another similar design, you can also look for an ice roller, which is usually made out of metal from what I've seen. And those are really cold too and can be used for colder temperature play. They just have a little bit of a different design, different aesthetic, especially if you wanna maybe have like one hand be cold and one hand be hot. Maybe you don't wanna have like two ice globes. You just wanna have one thing for one hand. Maybe an ice roller makes more sense for that usage. Something else that I'm like, why hasn't anyone else talked about this yet or done anything with this yet would be micro needling rollers. These are very popular for like skin rejuvenation and hair restoration. There are all different brands and sizes, but the general concept of a roller like this is you basically have really teeny tiny little needles all together and then you roll them against your skin and that causes basically like micro pricks in your skin. Some of the bigger ones that have larger needles, like for body use, you will sometimes see more like actual blood being drawn, but typically the intention is not to draw blood and it can be painful, it can be intense. It's met in the beauty world for restoring your youth and reducing wrinkles and fine lines and things like that. But I think for kink usage, you could definitely use this as a way to play with like I'm inventing a new term here. Micro blood play is what I will call it. Now the disadvantage of these, similarly to vampire gloves actually, is that the needles do wear out. They're not meant to be used over and over and over and over again. They do get broken, they bend. Not really great for your skin to be using a broken needle over it over and over again. So you do have to replace them periodically and they can be a little bit pricey because it is a beauty tool. But I think if you want to use these maybe for like occasional scenes, they're great because you can sanitize them unlike with a vampire glove. And I think they give you a way to play maybe with blood in a way that's not quite so intense as with like a scalpel or maybe with like a needle that's meant to be stuck all the way through the skin and back out, it's a little bit larger. I just think like, why haven't people used these more? I know lots of people that are into very intense sensation that would love to be able to do something with all of this useless extra skin on their hands and on the tops of their feet that are not otherwise being used for pain purposes. So that might be a good way to explore that area. Also, if you like like Wartenberg wheels, this is kind of like a more extreme version of a Wartenberg wheel. But if you're not that extreme and you're not really into the blood and having to maintain a thing with needles on it and like that's not, not your bag, 
totally get it, totally fair. If you want something else that is beauty related, I recommend looking for like gua sha stones or jade rollers. These are similar to ice globes or an ice roller because they can be used around the face. They are designed for de-puffing and de-aging and just, they have a lot of skincare claims associated with them. And some people swear by them, but I like these because they do conform to the contours of your body more closely. Whereas a lot of like kink instruments, they're very just blunt and one level and like you have to make it work around edges as opposed to it being designed to work around edges. These are really great for like even service stuff or if you wanna give somebody a facial massage, but because they can contour to things, you can easily use them around more intimate parts of the body for maybe more of an intimate massage or for temperature play or for sensation play. There's a lot of parts of the body that don't really get a lot of attention in sensation play because it's difficult to use things around like the elbows or around the kneecaps because of how awkward the ankles are. But now you can more easily go over parts of the body that don't typically get quite as much attention because it's contoured and meant to be used in that area. I would say one caveat with this is oftentimes, especially cheaper ones are made out of stone and they can be quite porous and that means it holds on to things that it comes into contact with and so wouldn't necessarily recommend using things around the intimate area i don't think that there's any studies about like bacterial transfer from a jade roller from using it on somebody's intimate body parts and then using it again on somebody else's intimate body parts don't really think we have data on that but intuitively i can see that maybe isn't the best idea because like yoni eggs have a similar problem so i would be cautious there but you can get stainless steel versions that would i think be better for that particular use case and really i could go on about different beauty implements that would make sense to use in a kink context because as i was saying there is a large overlap a lot of brands carry things that you can easily use for kink purposes, like blindfolds, like violet wands. Like, did you know that violet wands have a use case in an esthetician's office? Cause a lot of estheticians do use them for actual beauty purposes and not just for shocking people for fun. So, you know, is it that weird? But yeah, I could make a whole game show. It's literally just, is this a kink toy or is it a beauty product? And that would be really fun. Well, we're gonna save it for another time and we're gonna move on to a different shopping area into a different part of the house from the bathroom. Now we are going to move on to the kitchen. And I don't think I could make a kink DIY pervertible video without mentioning wooden spatulas. I don't know how I haven't mentioned it already at this point in one of these other videos I've made, but wooden spatulas and wooden hairbrushes are classics in the corporal punishment spankle world. They are very popular, that is for a good reason. However, it needs to be said, I do not recommend using the wooden spatula you used to make your dinner with to then hit your partner with. I recommend having like a separate, like maybe like a Mr. Mean Spoon kind of thing that's kept by itself, that's only used for punishment times and not for like when you're making spaghetti, just so you don't like accidentally mix things up. But wooden spatulas, very popular. If you wanna get something like this, I recommend. You can go really cheap, but honestly, might be a nice time to shell out for the nice olive wood, like William Sonoma, whatever brands, like nice, nice stuff here. If you wanna get something that's gonna last you for a long time. And if you're not really into wood, it's not really your kink, I would also look at silicone spatulas too. They definitely have a different sensation to them. Like wooden spatulas especially are very like stingy. They are mean toys. Great for some people who like that. I think a silicone spatula gives you a little bit of a different feel. It feels a little bit more thuddy, a little bit less surface level than a wooden spatula does. It's not thuddy by any means. If you use the like more rounded end, like if you're if you're holding it the wrong way around and then hitting your partner with like the round handle part, that's gonna feel a little bit thuddier, but like silicone, at least to me in my experience, always has a surface level sting to it, even if the toy is like really thick and bulky. There's a 
the Tantus brand like silicone paddle that is like the bane of so many people's existence for this reason because it's like it's supposed to be funny but it's also super stingy at the same time but anyways that's not really a DIY thing that's just the, the kink toy you can buy but silicone spatulas wooden spatulas wooden hairbrushes obviously also great for role play like again corporal punishment domestic discipline 1950s role play Victorian household stuff anything involving like home discipline this is going to be a good option for that in terms of role play. Now, this is something I just came up with off the top of my head that I also wanted to like include here and sneak in. See, you guys are going to like five ideas in one here for this video. But if you want to have something where you have the same thing in both hands, you want to do a little drumming, you can look at drumsticks. You can look at cooking chopsticks, like those really big like cooking chopsticks. Great options there, definitely a different sensation profile than a wooden spatula would have, but they come in a matched pair, which is nice. And then with drumming, especially if you are somebody who's into music or you're a drummer, get a kit to use for kink purposes. Like I love scenes that involve like drumming to a beat. Why not try it, you know? I think it's a really fun scene. So this next one is gonna be like totally out of left field and you're gonna have to just bear with me for a second. I promise it's gonna make sense. I would recommend long rope candy, like one of those like nerd ropes or longer rope candy. I got this idea from Kinkfest a couple of years ago because at Kinkfest, there at least was a vendor who sold long rope candy and their whole thing was like, yeah, you can eat it and play with it. Yes, we know we're kinky here. This is kind of what we do. And I thought that was so fun. And it's not like, a solid stick of like hard candy, like a candy cane. It's not like, like, I don't know how to describe, if you haven't seen it before, I don't know how to describe what it is. It's kind of like semi soft, but still rigid, like not like a marshmallow. And you can definitely get a little bit of like a whipping action with it. Definitely more on the stingy side, definitely can get sticky, especially if it's humid out or if you try to eat it or like suck on it first and then use it, it can definitely get sticky. So be aware of that. But I love the idea of having something that you can like taunt your partner with like in bondage and then you're like ah look at this candy and then like eat it a little bit in front of them and then hit them with it and then like finish eating it like ah so evil great idea though if you like that kind of role play just having a little bit of a like a fun silly environment like i don't know why i think this would be really great for like clown role play purposes or for like cgl or ddlg because it's like oh you're pouting and you want candy and then you get beat up by the candy and then you do you know a little bit of aftercare with it maybe you get to eat some or your partner eats it or you have like a separate piece you eat instead like you know there's not very many kink toys you can eat after you're done with the scene and i like the idea of being able to play around with that so longer rope candy if you see it somewhere at a carnival at a fair at a kink convention maybe even give it a try see how it feels i i wish i remembered more of what the sensation was like for impact play when i tried it so i could describe it but i just remember trying it on my arm and it being very like whippy but having like a little bit of a like a stop to it is how i would describe it like it was like stingy and it would kind of slide off but you know your experience will vary but i don't know if this is going to make more sense than the candy recommendation i don't really think it does but my next recommendation is for an object that like very few people own to begin with and that would be a shoehorn this could be made with wood with metal with plastic even and I like this because I don't think anyone on planet Earth would ever suspect that you're using this for kink purposes unless you told somebody about it. Like you can keep it in your closet, with your coats, with your shoes. You can just have it out. And like no one's ever going to think like, oh, he like totally, <laughs> totally spanks her with a simple Like no one's ever going to think that. And this is also great for role play. Again, domestic discipline stuff, 1950s stuff. Like maybe if you have more like a leave it to beaver, like 1950s type, like CGL thing going on, I think it would be good for that because it's like a home implement and it's something that people would probably improvise using for domestic discipline in a home environment outside of a kink context. But from what I've heard from people that have used it, it's a very unique form of sensation play because of the shape of the toy and it can also lead to some very interesting marks. So if you like collecting interesting weird marks, Maybe try a shoehorn. And next up, this is a crowd favorite, probably more than anything on this list. That would be 
a foam baseball bat. Seriously, everyone's favorite top at the dungeon has a foam baseball bat. I don't make the rules. I'm just telling it like it is. Everyone loves the foam baseball bat. It is something that has a nice universal appeal for pretty much all bottoms. It's kind of silly. It's kind of funny. Again, it would go great with different types of role play, like clown role play or with DDLG or CGL, all that stuff. And they are very fun in that they are one of the few things that is genuinely a very thuddy toy. And it's hard to find those, especially for DIY options. Almost all of them are very stingy. This is very thuddy. It's not too intense. It's a good warm-up toy. And they come in so many different colors and shapes and designs. You can ones that have like SpongeBob on them and princesses and like pets and different color combinations. You can really get something that fits your vibe, your play kit with a foam baseball bat. And the one downside really is that it is foam. So it is porous. You get a lot of these DIY options that aren't really meant for like fluid transfer. She really consider most of these toys to be fluid bonded if they are going to be porous. One other tool I really like is a meat tenderizer. Meat tenderizer is usually going to be plastic or metal. You can get ones that are more for shredding, that are more like meat shredders. So for things like shredding chicken or pulled pork or maybe like mixing up a salad. Those tend to look like big fake wolverine claws which to me are entertaining just for that reason alone but also like they can be used for more like scratchy sensation play for using it like a pair of claws a good sort of replacement for like custom fit metal claws they're never going to be that sharp or that intense but it's a good i think introduction to that sensation that is not going to break the bank like a 200 dollars set of custom fit metal claws maybe what so I love those as an option, but personally, my favorite is something like this. Believe it or not, this is not made for kink. This is something, you can get these on Amazon. This is literally like a brass knuckles meets meat tenderizer thing. And it's great for impact play, great for punching. And I just, it's even good for like scratching back and forth with and like having it be more of like a abrasive tool for like abrasion play. And these are fun. This is like a great little thing you can get for like a gag gift. Like it's very much like the gift you give to like an elder millennial like Gen X man who says he wants to like cook or grill or something like this is just very coded for that I think which is fun but you can get also like regular meat tenderizers especially ones that have like multiple options on them so you can choose like the level of tenderizing you want to do or like how big they are very thuddy good for thuddy or impact play and just like this is definitely one of my personal favorites like if you're somebody who likes Thuddier sensation, abrasive sensation at the same time. This is like one of the few ways to get both abrasion and thuddy at the same time. So love this, great option. Now my final category I want to talk about would be like just little like random little bits and pieces you can kind of find around. Because when I was researching different DIY ideas, I kept finding little things that didn't really like make sense as like their own category, but that I thought would make for good sensation play tools. So for example, something like cooking twine, that could be really good for like micro bondage. Cause otherwise you have to like special order like little teeny tiny, little very, very thin like hemp or jute rope and like who has time for that? So cooking twine, great for like micro bondage around like the fingers, around the toes. If you want to look into more how to do that, very fun and niche way of engaging in bondage, especially if you're like, oh, I feel really uncomfortable having bondage all over my whole body, but maybe having like something on one hand feels okay. Or maybe having something on like my toes feels okay, but not on like my upper body. So that's a way to play with bondage that is very different from how maybe it would be conventionally done. I also like things like wide fabric headbands, like the kinds that you would get for pushing your hair back when you're doing makeup or skincare. I have this one that is very, very cute. And this is a Sanrio character for people who don't know that. This is something, it's not like great, 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 great as a blindfold. Like if I have it like this, I can definitely still see, especially because I have a fairly prominent like bridge of my nose. I can definitely see like down here and see light. But if you're not looking for like a total blackout blindfold situation, 
something like this, cute, easy, innocuous, doesn't like scream, like warning, adult times are happening. Like I, I like these because they're just, they're so unassuming and they're so cute. So great option and also comfortable. A lot of blindfolds have like these big like honking buckles in the back, like the kink made ones. Like if you want to lay down, the buckle is digging in the back of your head and I just, I don't like that. So this is like really easy, it's elastic, so it fits multiple sizes fairly securely. Don't have to have buckles all over the place on it. So love this, great option, great option for that. Just, I love blindfolds, but finding a good one, it's really, really hard task sometimes. And one other thing that I found was silicone lip scrubbers. I, I've never used these before, but I like this as an idea because it's just a little, tiny piece of silicone. Sometimes it's like a little finger thing you can wear. Sometimes it's more like a makeup brush and it just has these little like almost like teeth on it or bristles on it that are made from silicone and I love the idea of using this for like micro sensation over like the eyelids, the eyebrow, over the lips, over the nose, the ears, on the genitalia maybe even and I just I feel like that could be it could be a really fun tool. Again, doesn't seem suspicious, seems very innocuous, and uh, it's definitely a unique tool that you wouldn't necessarily find a directly kink version of. So I love talking about DIY ideas. I could do it forever, but that is where I'm going to end it for now, y'all. I would love to hear your thoughts in a comment down below. I am filming at night right now. I don't normally ever film at night. It has been a very topsy-turvy couple of weeks. I have been very sick, so I probably sound different to you all in this video. I have, I like... I've been dealing with a lot of different stuff and like I lost my voice, I had a really bad cough, I still kind of have a cough, I'm still recovering, but I thought I would try filming at night maybe just to have that experience because apparently most other YouTubers film their videos at 2 a.m. I didn't catch the memo, I don't do that, but I thought I'd try it out. So I'm actually filming this, is, it's eight o'clock right now that I'm filming this, so it's not super, super late. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts in a comment down below. I would love to hear your favorite DIY options, either things that you have discovered on your own, something on this list, something I missed, please share down below. If you did enjoy this video already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of different kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you want to support what I do, the best way you can do that is with Patreon. Link to that will be down below. If you do already support me there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.